What's up everyone? My name is Melanie and today we are talking about using puzzle mats in Redshift. We're going over everything from how to set them up in Cinema 4D to how to render them to how to open them up in After Effects or Photoshop for compositing. Now in order to make this tutorial a reasonable length, I have to assume a a fair amount of Redshift knowledge. So I'm not going to go over all of the render settings or how to set up all of your AOVs, but rather I just want to focus today on puzzle mats. There's timestamps below if you want to skip around. Otherwise, we're just going to start by talking about what puzzle mats are and why you might want to use them. Puzzle mats are Redshift's version of object buffers in Cinema 4D. So in native Cinema 4D, you use something called object buffers to separate out objects in your render. And in the same way in Redshift, you use puzzle mats to separate objects. The reason these are used so much is that they give you so much control after you get out of Cinema 4D to adjust your render. So you can adjust things like brightness, contrast, hue and saturation, all sorts of stuff without having to re-render your entire scene in Cinema 4D. And normally when you render something out of Cinema 4D, you can make these same adjustments, but it makes the adjustment to your entire image. But using something like puzzle mats can allow you to just isolate certain objects. So you can just change or adjust one portion of your image or one color that you don't like anymore. And it just gives you so much control. So let's jump over into Cinema 4D and actually build one of these things. Okay, so I set up this little scene in Cinema 4D to demonstrate using puzzle mats. It's a pretty basic scene. It's just cubes and spheres, and there's a three-point lighting setup, a camera, and a background. So we're going to use this scene to set up puzzle mats. To start, you want to open up your render settings, and you want to make sure you're using the Redshift renderer not the standard renderer. Then you go through each of your settings as you normally would, checking your width, height, frame range, all that good stuff. For save settings for this, for my render, I'm going to save this under this folder cube scene, and I'm going to save it as a PNG. Now, if you're rendering something for a client, you may want to use an open EXR, which holds all the color data, it's basically lossless. But in this case, since it's just an example, I'm just going to use a PNG. Now, as I said before, I'm not going to go over every single Redshift setting. If your render is noisy, the stuff you want to mess with is this unified sampling and then these sampling overrides. You can change how many samples your reflections and lights get. You can also add global illumination and there's a sampling under global illumination that you can change. Once you're happy with your render settings, now we're going to go over setting up your puzzle mat AOV. To set up your puzzle mat, go under your AOV settings. Now we can name our AOV here under the file name and this dollar sign project is what's called a token in Cinema 4D and it will take the name of your project file and put it at the beginning of your AOV file name. I change this fairly often because my file names often have like v1 or v2 or some other weird name so what I'm going to do is change it to what I'm saving as in the original save, which in this case is cube scene. So now my file is going to be cube scene underscore AOV. Now I'm going to go into the AOV manager to set up my AOV. And you'll see that all of the AOV options pop up in this left panel, but the only ones active will be in the middle panel. If you're doing a big render or render for a client, I highly suggest that you use a full AOV set of passes. Typically it's reflections, refractions, global illumination, specular lighting, diffuse lighting. But in this case, since this is just an example, I don't want to set up all of the AOVs. So I'm only going to set up a puzzle mat AOV. But the puzzle mat is right here and you can either double click on it or drag it over to add it to your enabled AOVs. When you go into AOV settings for the puzzle mat, you'll notice there's a direct output and a multi-pass output option. This option is 
mostly personal preference. Using the multi-pass option takes you through Cinema 4D's output channels. So the main thing is you can use Cinema 4D's compositing project function, which allows you to automatically save everything into one single compositing file. If you use this option, you want to make sure to check on the Cinema 4D multi-pass file also. The other option is the one I typically use, and that's the direct output. This bypasses the Cinema 4D multi-pass system and renders directly out of Redshift. The difference is that you don't have the option to create a compositing project. That's really not a big deal to me because I like to see all my AOVs as separate files anyways, so I'm going to use the direct option here. Now on the right, we have all of our AOV settings. Let me just expand them so you guys can actually see them. Okay, so under name, you can change the name of your AOV. So we may want to call this object map or maybe object puzzle. Let's call it object puzzle. I usually rename all of my puzzle mats because it's pretty common to have more than one since they only hold three layers of information. Under mode, you have material ID and object ID, which are just like they sound. Material ID will use materials and object ID will use objects. So let's set up the first one using objects. Let's say we want to get this yellow sphere on its own mat so that we can adjust it later in After Effects. To get the sphere on its own mat, we need to give it a unique object ID. You can add an object ID to an object by right-clicking and then going to Redshift Tags, Redshift Object. And you can see that the tag has been added. It's this little red hexagon right here to the right of my object. Once I have a Redshift Object tag, I can give the sphere an object ID. So I'll go into object ID and check override and I can give it whatever number I want. I'm going to use one, two, and three because it's easy for me to remember. Now this yellow sphere is object ID one. So if I set this red ID under the puzzle mat to be one, it will now hold the sphere object, which is the correlating object ID one. So I'll set up three objects for this mat. So we'll set this back purple cube to be object ID two. And then I'll set this light blue cube in the front to be object ID three. Now this puzzle mat will hold those three objects. A puzzle mat can only hold three separate mats. That's the maximum but you can add multiple puzzle mats if you need to. So if I wanted to add another mat, I'd do it in the exact same way, but I would name it something different, like maybe object two puzzle. Then I'd set it up the same way, but you wanna make sure to not use the same numbers. So maybe I'd make the numbers four, five, and six. And now I could add object tags with four, five, and six to other objects and create another separate mat. So for now, let's just focus on this first object puzzle mat. And let's look at what the puzzle mat will actually look like. So if we go to the Redshift render view, we can see this little drop down menu, which will hold all of our AOVs. In this case, we only have a puzzle mat set up, and if we click it, you can see that nothing is happening. That's because in order to see your puzzle mat here, you need to be in bucket mode. And now if we change to bucket mode, you'll start to see your puzzle mat appear as Redshift calculates the buckets. And now we have a puzzle map and object ID one is red, ID two is green, and ID three is blue, just like how we set it up. So now that we've isolated each of these objects, we'll be able to make adjustments in After Effects or wherever after we render out of Cinema 4D. Now, if I wanted all of these objects to be in the same mat, say I wanted them all in the red mat, well, I would 
just change all of my Redshift object IDs to be number one. And now you'll see all the objects fall under a red mat. So that's how you set up mats in Redshift using object IDs. Now let's quickly go over using material IDs. And we'll name this material mat underscore puzzle. And I'll stick with material ID and I can set this up with numbers the same way. You can get up to three materials in a single puzzle mat. So I'll do a mat for purple, yellow, and blue, the three main materials. And to get to your material IDs, you want to go into your Redshift material and under output, there's a material ID box and you just change that. So we'll make purple, yellow, and blue different numbers. And these material previews sometimes mess up. So this is actually the blue material, even though the preview didn't update. And now that I have material IDs, if I go up to my drop down menu and select the material puzzle mat, you'll see all the materials separated into different colored puzzle mats. The process is the same. It's just a matter of whether you want to use materials or individual objects to separate out your, your color mats. I forgot to change this puzzle mat to direct output. So I am going to do that now. Also, real quick, if you're using direct output mode, there's this box that Redshift gives you to alter your save settings. So you could use a different file format if you wanted. Like I said before, EXR is the best because it gives you the full spectrum of color data, but there's other options here if you wanted to use them for some reason. You can also change your file name. The default is a token that reads this file name here and then appends your pass name to the end. So in this case, it will be cubescene underscore AOV underscore OBJ underscore puzzle. Just if you wanna know what all those symbols mean, there you go. So now that we've got our puzzle mats set up, let's render them out and we'll take them into After Effects and Photoshop and see how to actually use them. Now that we're in After Effects, we'll finally get to see the power of puzzle mats. They're a really awesome way to make changes and adjustments to your renders and individual elements of your renders. I use them a lot when I want to adjust the background. Sometimes I want to delete the background out altogether and make a new background in After Effects or just change the tint so that my objects are more contrasted with the background. So that's one way that I use puzzle mats a lot. Here is the render that I brought in that we built in Cinema 4D. There's the main pass and the two puzzle mats. I made a comp with my main pass and now we're going to bring down the material puzzle mat. Now in order to use this as a mat we want to go to effect channel and then set mat. And now in set mat, we can choose whatever channel we want to use for our mat, red, green, or blue. So for instance, say we decided we don't like this shade of purple and we're thinking maybe a different color would work better. What we could do is make an adjustment layer and bring over hue and saturation and use the puzzle mat as an alpha mat. And now if we make adjustments to the hue, it changes everything. Cause I didn't change this. So the purple material is the red mat. So we'll change this use for mat to red channel. Now, if we use the adjustment layer, we'll see it's only making adjustments to the purple material. So this is a really useful way to make changes to colors or brightness or curve adjustments. And we'll just try some different colors here. The nice thing is if you do all of your AOVs, if you have reflections, for instance, we could go in and just change the reflection on this purple thing right here. So you can kind of start to see how powerful this can be and how much control you can have over your renders in After Effects. 
We can also do individual objects, which is why we made this object puzzle mat. So if I bring that down, maybe I want this yellow sphere to pop more. I'll bring over an adjustment layer again. Let's name these layers. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We'll set this mat up and, well, it's going to be the red channel again. And we're going to use that as a mat. And now we can adjust the sphere. And maybe we want it to be a color all on its own so that it will pop more. So maybe we'll make it uh, dark blue. And you can use all the same tools you normally use in After Effects. So you can adjust the brightness and you don't want to go too crazy because it can definitely degrade your render and start to look weird. But there you go. Now instead of a yellow sphere, we changed the whole look and we didn't have to re-render anything. So let's quick jump over to Photoshop so you can see how to use mats in Photoshop if you have a still image. Over in Photoshop, the process is basically the same, but I'll still go over it for you. If you load in your files and go over to channels, you can see your red, green, and blue channels. You want to make sure that you have your puzzle mat selected so that you can get a clean mat. Otherwise, if you're just selected on your regular image, you'll get some gray values in here. And you just want a black and white mat in this case. With these channels, you can just click through them and have a look at them and control click on this box to select a mat. You'll know it's selected because you can see these little marching ants on the image. So now if we go back to the layers, we can add color correction effects just like we did in After Effects. You'll notice that some of these are grayed out and that's because we brought over an EXR, which is a 32-bit image. So to get all of our options, we actually need to change it to a 16-bit per channel image. And once we do that, you can see that all of our options are available now. So I'll just do a hue and saturation just like we did in After Effects. And you can see it created a hue and saturation layer along with a mask. The white portion is what will be affected and the black portion will not. So now you can see if we adjust the hue, it will affect everything in the white portion. And that is the Photoshop element. Now, hopefully you know how to use puzzle mats in both Photoshop and After Effects. I don't have or use Fusion, but that's another common compositing tool Cinema 4D artists use. Just something to be aware of, something maybe you might wanna try. I also want to mention crypto mats. Crypto mats are another mat option that you can use in Redshift. And the difference between a crypto mat and a puzzle mat is that instead of holding three matte colors, a crypto mat can hold as many as you want it to. The problem with crypto mats that I've found is that they really slow down After Effects. So I usually stick to puzzle mats and I find them easier for After Effects to calculate and also I just find them easier to use. They're not as confusing because they don't have so many colors. But if you're using Fusion, Crypto mats might be a really good option for creating mats. All right, so that is it. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that you learned something new about puzzle mats. If you have any questions about this video or ideas for future tutorials, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Once again, my name is Melanie. I go by MoGraphMel across all of the social media channels. I hope that you all have a great week, and until next time, happy animating.